Good evening and welcome to the Southern Hills this evening. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors tonight, um, as well as those of you joining us via live stream. Uh, tonight is youth night, so I appreciate all of our young men uh, participating tonight, and I know they're probably pretty tired after fall retreat. We did have a good retreat this weekend, um, and I understand the marriage retreat went well too, so I'm uh, glad everything has gone well this weekend. But a few announcements we'd like to make before we uh, begin our services. Jimmy Lincoln will be having surgery tomorrow at Williamson Medical Center, and I know he would appreciate being, being remembered in our prayers as he is uh, going through his surgery. Then I was also handed a note that Ricky Rains, this is the grandfather of one of our Sunshine School students, he had a heart attack on Wednesday, and the family is traveling to Florida uh, to be with him. So uh, I know they would like to be remembered in our prayers and added to our prayer list um, as he is uh, working through uh, the, the remnants of the heart attack. Several other things going on um, here at Southern Hills. Uh, there's a baby shower honoring Aaron Davenport uh, Sunday, November the 7th. More information about that is, on, is in the bulletin. Then also a reminder about the breakfast meeting uh, for the, the elders are planning for the elders, deacons, and minister on November 6th at 8 a.m. and pl plan to be here till about 10. Also the family forum coming up November the 20th. The sign-up sheet is online. So if you're planning to be a part of that, if you would go online, and fill out the form uh, just so we can make uh, the preparations for that. Then there was planned a medical um, Medicare information meeting on Tuesday. However, that is having to be canceled. Hillary Broom has found an arterial blockage and will be undergoing tests and possibly surgery next week. So that has been canceled uh, for now. So if you're planning to go to that on Tuesday, um, just to make a note that that is canceled. But we'd also like to add Hillary Broom to our prayer list as well as he's uh, going through those tests and possibly surgery. Uh, but those are the announcements that I have for tonight. If you would, bow with me in prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your word. We are thankful for this, this time as we gather around your throne and worship your name. Father, we pray that you be with the young men as they lead us in our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Our first song tonight will be number, will be number 847, Bind Us Together. 847, bind us together. I'll be leading this through once. Bind us
Our first scripture reading this evening will be coming from Psalm chapter 63, verse 1. Again, that is Psalm chapter 63, verse 1. O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we approach your throne this evening. And we thank you for another day that you've given to us where we can gather as a Christian family and to worship your name, Lord. We thank you for this weekend that you've given to this congregation as the youth have been uplifted with the fall retreat, Lord, and the families have been uplifted with the marriage retreat, Lord. We thank you for these amazing things that you've allowed us to do. At this time, we ask your blessing, your healing on our members like Jimmy Leakin, men like Ricky Rains, Hillary Broom, Lord, those who are hurt, who are ill, Be with them, comfort them, and heal them if it be your will. We ask that you guide and direct our hearts and our minds, Lord, as we enter into this worship service. They're able to praise your name with a pure heart and understand the messages that we are brought. We thank you for this word that we can study, and most of all, for the gift of your Son. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. Good evening. First song tonight will be number 732, 732, we praise thee, O God. I'll be leading the first and last verses of this song. Next song will be number six hundred, number two hundred. Pray, hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Number two hundred, hallelujah, praise Jehovah. I'll be praying for the last verse of this song.
Well, my last song is number 682, To God Be the Glory. 682, To God Be the Glory. I'm going all verses of this song. Our second scripture reading this evening will be taken from Psalm 63, verses 2 through 6. Again, that's Psalm 63, 2 through 6. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my, my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, but my mouth will praise you with my joyful lips. And I remember you upon my bed and meditate you in the watches of the night. Our next song this evening will be number 456. Four, five, six.
next song this evening will be number 684. 684. <laughs> This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. I tell you the way it all, somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. song this evening will be number 297. 297. Before that, let's say and sing number 583. 583. Final scripture reading this evening will be from Psalms chapter 63, verse 7 through the end of the chapter. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God, everyone who swears by him shall glory but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped.
just as a reminder to stay humble, I, I was sitting down, this just happened, I was sitting down on that pew right there, and someone handed me a note, and while I was, and it was very serendipitous how this happened, while I was sitting there, I was thinking, you know what, I think I got this, I think I'm going to do a pretty good job, and the note says, give this to Cy, his coat is tucked into his pants, so... <laughs> Just a reminder to stay humble when you think that, you know, everything's going to be all right. So that kind of put a bummer in your confidence. Just remember, God will always humble you in his way. And so that is what happened. I do appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak this evening. Um, I appreciate the elders giving all the young men this opportunity. It is a great opportunity. Um, I, I appreciate all these young men getting up, including myself. I appreciate the, um, the young men leading singing and reading the scripture. We sing a song sometimes, and we're about to sing. It's called, I Want to Be a Worker. And I wonder sometimes if, do we mean that when we sing it? Because oftentimes I see, quote unquote, Christians who say, oh, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. But then they go out and, you know, do whatever they want on the weekends, or when they go home, they just do whatever they want to do. They think that being a Christian is almost something of a hobby. You know, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday, and I sit in my pew. But this is not the case. Being a Christian does not mean, oh, I'm just going to live my life the way I want to. Being a Christian means you're going to be a worker. That's one of my favorite songs that we sing is I want to be a worker because it's true. If you are a Christian, you are a worker. You cannot be a Christian and not be a worker. James 2 and verse 26 says, faith without works is dead. So if you will, for the next few moments, I'd like to focus on four things that I think every Christian needs to have and needs to work. They are service, sacrifice, suffering, and sincerity. If you are a Christian, you are automatically a servant. You can't be a Christian and not be a servant. If you don't believe me, read Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the talents. John chapter 13, where Jesus himself, the Son of God, washes the disciples' feet. If God on the day of judgment is going to say to you, well done, that good and faithful servant, if you are faithful, then obviously you have to be a servant. It's essential that someone be a, be a servant. If you read the Bible, you'll come to the book of Acts. We have a literal book of the Bible called the book of Acts. And if you read it, you will see that it is constantly the early church and the apostles working, going, and going, and going. From chapter 1 to chapter 28, it's constantly working. Every Christian and every apostle in that book is constantly working and doing what they can to serve and further the kingdom. If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to, you're going to have to sacrifice some things. And with sacrifice often comes suffering. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24 says, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his own soul? As a Christian, you are expected to sacrifice, and it is expected that you will, you will suffer with that. With sacrifice often comes suffering. Remember the rich young ruler. He asked Jesus, and I'm paraphrasing, he asked Jesus, what, must, what do I need to do to be your follower? What do I need to do to be saved? And Jesus said, sell everything you own and give it to the poor. And the passage says that he went out and wept bitterly, for he had great possessions. You have to sacrifice if you want to be a follower of Christ. And with that will sometimes come suffering. You do have to sacrifice. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he suffered. If you don't believe me, read that passage. It's where he goes through and pretty much lists everything that he has gone through in his ministry. And it's bad. It's a lot of suffering. It took a lot of sacrifice on Paul's part to be a follower of Christ. Stephen was stoned for his beliefs. He died. He sacrificed his life for the cause of Christ. In order to be a Christian, you have to be willing to sacrifice, and you have to be willing to suffer. The fourth and final is to, you have to be sincere. 
Um, Garrett talked about, and um, I believe it was a week ago, he talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and starting in verse 1, where it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am as a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If we do great things, but not do them in the proper and right attitude, it doesn't matter what we're doing. It's vain. It's worthless. It's empty. We have to make sure what we are doing is in accordance with God's word and in accordance with the proper attitude. If we are to call ourselves Christians, we have to have, I believe, these four things. We have to be willing to serve. We have to be willing to sacrifice. We have to be willing to suffer. And we have to do them all in the proper attitude. I think it's funny. You can look throughout the Bible and find these pretty much anywhere, especially in the book of Acts. But I think the best place you can find it is when you look at Christ. Christ embodies all four of these attributes completely, perfectly. Because he was the son of God, because he was Christ, and he was perfect. Jesus was a servant. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 45 reads, For even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was a servant. He did not come to serve himself. He came to serve us, and he came to serve God. The best passage, I think, that captures the fact that Jesus embodied all four of these attributes perfectly is Philippians chapter 2 and um, verse, uh, starting in verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. And it says, have this mind among you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he's in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even a death on the cross. Jesus was a servant. It says that in the passage. Jesus was willing to die a painful death on the cross and humble himself to that point. Jesus was willing to sacrifice and Jesus was willing to suffer. If we are to, as Paul says, and in 1 Corinthians 11, I believe, imitate Paul as he imitates Christ, we have to do these things. We have to be willing to serve. We have to be willing to sacrifice, and we have to be willing to suffer. I think that passage really captures that essence of what Jesus did very, very well. Jesus was sincere. In the Garden of Gethsemane, what is it he said? He said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus did not want to go on the cross. I think it's important that we know that. Jesus didn't want to do it, but he did it because he had to do it. He did it because God wanted him to do it, and because we needed a sacrifice, because he loved us. But you see the sincerity of Jesus in the fact that he he didn't care what he wanted. He cared what God wanted. He didn't want to die on the cross. He asked that if if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless... Not my will, but your will be done. That is the attitude we all should have. This life is temporary. This is not the real life. There's a life beyond this one. And that test you're going to take tomorrow or that ACT or whatever, it's not going to matter if you die tomorrow. All that matters if you die tomorrow is what you did for the glory of God. It's all that matters. The only thing that is important in life is to be a Christian and to follow God's word. We can't be a Christian and uh, just on the side. You're not truly a Christian if you just treat it as though it's a hobby. Being a Christian means that you are going to work and you have to serve and sacrifice and suffer and do it with the sincere and loving attitude that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. We have to be willing to submit to God and to his will and be willing to obey him and be willing to do whatever it takes to further the kingdom of God. It can be discouraging sometimes. Um, Now, I'm preaching this lesson to me as well because I'm wondering to myself, what can I do for the kingdom? How can I do better? So don't think I'm trying to be better than you because I am not. I know there are people sitting in this auditorium who do a phenomenal job of serving the Lord. There's so many great people in this congregation. But it can be discouraging sometimes to look to, you're trying your best, you you want to be a servant for the Lord, but you look around and you see, man, 
that, 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 that man, that, that woman, she, she really serves the Lord well. Man, I wish I could do that. Or maybe it can be discouraging to look around you and see people who aren't doing what they should, aren't being the Christians they should be. That can be discouraging. But we have to have this in mind that it is not about other people. You can't worry about other people. You have to worry about yourself and make sure yourself is doing what is right. Make sure what you are doing is proper and in accordance with God's word. You can't worry about other people. You can't compare yourself to other people. The only person you should compare yourself to is Christ because he is perfect. All the good people I can think of are imperfect except for Christ. We can't compare ourselves to other people. Everybody has different gifts and different talents. But what you have to do is find your talent and use it for the glory of God. God has given you a specific talent. I don't care. You can say that, oh, I don't have a talent. I'm just a... No, you, everybody in this room has something they are good at. Everybody in this room has something that they can do and use for the glory of God. You could say, oh, I'm not good with people. I'm an introvert. Fine, write cards for people. Send letters to someone who's hurting. Often introverts are readers and writers. You can send a letter to somebody. If you're an extrovert, so they call, like myself, stop trying to take the attention away from God. It's not about you, it's about him. But find a way to use your talent for the glory of God. I'm up here, I'm speaking, great. But if I get down from this pulpit and don't live a good Christian life, what is it worth? You have to use your talents for the glory of God. Every day, each and every day. You can't just say on Sunday, well, I'll use my talent for the Lord today. I'll speak today and I'll give a message and now you'll use my talent for the glory of God. No, no. It is something you do each and every day. It is a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. It's a life in which you live. So ask yourself each and every day, what can I do for the kingdom of God? How can I use my talents for the glory of God? Because remember, it's not about the people around you. It's about God. It's not about you It's all about God. So make sure you are living your life in the way in accordance with God's word. And make sure you're using your talents for the glory of God and the furtherance of the church. I mentioned the song, I Want to Be a Worker. That'll be the invitation song that we sing. It's not a a usual invitation song. But as we sing this song, I want you to think in your mind this question. Instead of when it says, I want to be a worker, I want you to think, will I be a worker for the Lord? Every time it says, I want to be a worker for the Lord, I want to love and trust his holy word, I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Lord. Oh, we're so confident when we sing that. But as we sing this invitation song, I want you to think in your mind for yourself, am I a worker for the Lord? Will I be a worker for the Lord? Will I love and trust his holy word? Will I sing and pray? Will I be busy every day in the kingdom of the Lord? Will I work? Will I pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord? Will I work? Will I pray? Will I labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord? If you're here tonight and you are maybe just, maybe life's got you down and maybe you're not doing the work of a Christian that you should be doing, please come forward. If you need to be baptized, you have not yet started your life as a Christian, I encourage you to do that. Whatever your need is, if you need the prayers, if you just need someone to talk to, There are so many elders here that will be willing to do that. There's so many ministers here that will be happy to do that with you. Whatever your need is, please come as we stand and as we sing this invitation song.
Ziel. The Lord's Supper has been prepared for anyone that was unable to partake of it this morning. As I finish each prayer, if, if you wish to partake, uh, please raise your hand and you'll be served from the back. Before we uh, offer prayers, I'd like to read a short scripture for us to prepare us for the, for the supper. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Would you bow with me, please, as we offer thanks for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity that we have to come here and to worship you and to study your, study your word, Father. As we partake of this memorial feast, Father, we ask that you bless the bread which we're about to take, which which is the broken, which serves as the broken body of Jesus, Father. And we ask that we partake of it, we, our minds be directed back to the cross, to the suffering that, that he suffered and for our sins. Father, we ask you to bless it in Christ's name. Amen. Father, as we continue this memorial feast uh, by partaking of, of the fruit of the vine, Father, I ask that you remember that it represents the blood of Jesus Christ, the suffering that he served, that he did on the cross, Father. And we ask to partake of it as we remember his, in Christ's name, amen. We're all blessed in so many ways in our lives, both materially and spiritually. And this is our opportunity to return part of our material blessings back to the Lord. We ask that those that contribute tonight do so generously and that the funds collected be used to support the work here at Southern Hills. Would you bow with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we, once again, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all the blessings that you provide for us. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to return some of the blessings that you have given us back to you. We ask that we do so with a cheerful heart and that these be used to further your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen.
Our closing song this evening will be number 756, 756. Please stand for this song. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful, glorious day that you've given us. We thank you for letting our youth group have a safe travel home from Fall Retreat and that we were able to spend time with each other and learn more about your word. Lord, we know that there are many that are sick and suffering. We ask that you please lay your healing hands on them and their family as they go throughout their trying times. Lord, I want to thank you for our elders and deacons and how they allowed our youth to lead the church tonight. Please give them wisdom as they guide our congregation. Lord, please be with us as we carry on this night, and we thank you for your son's sacrifice on the cross, and it's in his name that we pray, amen.